If you're struggling to get the right data structure in Airtable, you do not want to miss this video. I'm going to be going into detail about this thing called a junction table, which 90% of the time will help you get over the hump and get the right data structure for your information. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Bronovost. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about that, do check out our website, including our free Airtable crash course. I'll include links below in the description of this video. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this actual video. We are talking about junction tables. Now you might not have ever heard of a junction table before, but it is one of those pieces that needs to be in your arsenal if you're building a lot of stuff in Airtable. Let's go ahead and hop into my screen and you're gonna see that I've got three different tables here. I've got students, classes, and a schedule. This is just one example of how you can use a junction table, but taking this information to the next level, you can imagine all kinds of scenarios. And in fact, 90% of the time when people ask me, how do I build this particular thing in Airtable? It needs a junction table. So this is kind of one of those go-to pieces of information that you will use time and time again. So let's jump into what we're trying to get here. I've got a bunch of students. We offer three different classes, underwater basket weaving, database creation, and automation magic. And then we have a schedule. And in this schedule, I'm tracking the class and the date. And just to kind of round this out, let me also have uh, what I call a schedule ID here. And I'll just write a quick formula. I'll put together a concatenate that includes both the class and uh, let's go ahead with a dash. And then I'll do a date time format here and include the date in a standard format. So that's just giving us a nice little name here that tells us exactly what this record is. It's this particular class on this day. Now the thing that we're trying to solve for here is how do I make or track attendance for my students? Because I can't build a link where I connect students to the schedule and then track the attendance. Let's take a look at what that looks like if I tried to build it that way. So if I put this in here and I link to students directly, I would build a link and then let's say the, th you know, Fle uh, Fred Flintstone and S Yogi Bear and uh, who else? Jerry Mouse. Let's say all three of them were invited to attend this one class. And then in this example, maybe Fred Flintstone doesn't show up. Well, how do I mark him as absent or how do I track his attendance? I have this direct relationship built between students and schedule and I can't get granular in here and say Fred did not attend but Yogi Bear did attend. There's no way for me to do that because I've included multiple students at the scheduling level. So what I really need is a unique record for each student and each schedule, right? So it would say automation magic, class date of 4-5-2021, Fred Flintstone. That's record one. Record two is automation magic, date 4-5-2021, Yogi Bear. You get the idea. Because then I can go in and drill into each one of those records and say yes or no. So how do we build this? This is a junction table. We add an additional table, create an empty table, and you can call this whatever you'd like. In this case, I'll just call it a junction table. I'm gonna delete all of these extra fields here and I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm going to connect this to two tables, two other tables. In this case, I'll connect to my student table. Here's my students, one student per record. So I'm turning off multiple records and then connect to my schedule. Again, one schedule per record. Go ahead and create that field. And I did it without saying it, but also make sure to check off multiple records. You only want one schedule at a time matched with one student at a time, okay? And then I can track attendance here with a checkbox. And so it would go a little bit like this. Let's say I switch, switch these around. So schedules on the left, I like that a little bit better. And I'll say, okay, underwater basket weaving, as attended by Fred Flintstone. Underwater basket weaving, as attended by Yogi Bear. Underwater basket weaving, whoops, pick the top one again, as attended by Jerry Mouse. And now I have the unique intersection 
of a student and a particular date that we offered our, our class. And I can track if Yogi Bear was there, if Jerry Mouse was there, but Fred Flintstone was absent and doesn't get that checked box. So this is exactly how we build this. Now I can go back into schedule and I would strongly recommend not having that direct link. So I'm gonna break the link to students and I'm gonna to go to students and I'm gonna break the field that was created when we linked to schedule, right? I only want students to connect to the junction table, which is again, giving us that unique intersection. Now I can group by my schedule in this example and you can see this. Now, an advanced pro tip for you is that Airtable has already built a really cool script for us inside of an app. So let me go ahead and look up Junction here. And there is a create Junction table script that I can add to my base. Let's go ahead and add that script. This was published by Airtable, so no problems there. And it's gonna prompt me for a few things when I go to run this. Any Junction table is going to start with two separate tables, and then it's going to combine the unique intersection of these tables in the Junction table. So, what I can do is list my two tables that produce the junction table. In this case, my first table is students, my second table is schedule, and the junction table itself is represented in the junction table. That was the name that I gave that table. And then tell it where the first junction field is named, right? So let's flip out of the script real quick. The first junction table is students. Well, at least that's how I've named it. I said students was my first table name. And the field name is student singular. So I need to bring that in here. Let's pop back into this. So again, my first table name is students. That's my table. My field is student singular. So I'll bring that down and match to it right here. And then my second table was schedule. And the name that I gave this field or column is also schedule. So I will link to that here. And that's it. That is what I need to do in order to turn this nice little script on. And what this is going to do when I push it, when I push run, it's going to create 42 new unique records, which are going to be the intersections, the unique intersections of a schedule and a student. So let's go ahead and proceed and you'll see what I mean here. This script ran, you see it's done now, and what it did was it automatically created all of the schedules and student intersections. So it took every single student in my database, all five of them, and it took every single schedule record I have, all nine of them. So nine times five is 45. And if we look down here at the bottom, we see that there are 45 unique intersections of these records. And so now I can track attendance for every single one of these students on every single one of these schedules. The last missing piece here is you'll probably wanna give the junction table the primary field or the leftmost field in this table. You'll wanna give it a good solid name. So I'll call this something like junction ID. Write a little formula here. And again, I'll probably just concatenate or string together my schedule. And let's say I put a dash and then my student. And this is just going to give each of these the unique name that represents the schedule, which in this case, Automation Magic, on this particular date, and this particular student. So at this point, you can then go down and track the attendance really easily. And all of the other pieces of any normal attendance tracker would be here for you. If you wanted to count up the number of sessions a student attended, you could do that at the student level by using a roll-up field. If you wanted to track the participation of a particular schedule. You could do that at the schedule level just by looking at and analyzing the junction table that we created. Now, as you add new students and or new schedules to the mix, well then you can rerun your junction table script and it's going to automatically create those intersections here for you without you having to do much work at all. Let me know in the comments below how you are using junction tables. As I said at the beginning, this is one of those things that 90% of the time when people have a question, it's because they haven't thought about using a junction table to solve their unique problem. So do your best to master junction tables. They are something that you will use a lot of 
if you're doing a lot of advanced building in Airtable. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.